Hello people, in this video we want to look at the types of episiotomy. Before that, what and all have we seen so far? We looked at that episiotomy is also called as perineotomy. It is a planned surgical incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall in the second stage of labor. It is a second degree injury. It's the most common obstetric operation. Basically, you want to in, uh, enlarge the vaginal opening to uh, ensure the easy delivery of the fetus. Uh, and you don't want to overstretch or rupture the perineal muscles. You want to reduce the stress on the fetal head also. Okay. So, uh, let's put the fetal part here and the maternal part here. Right. So, that will be easy. Then, what are the advantages to the mother? There will be a controlled incision. It is better than some lacerated wound that might occur if you don't do a controlled incision. And uh, this is uh, will reduce the duration of the second stage of labor. It will reduce the trauma to the pelvic floor muscles and it will reduce the chances of uterine prolapse or urinary incontinence. Okay. Uh, these are all suggested benefits only. Not uh, uh, They are not fully sure of all these. Coming to fetus, it will reduce the intracranial injuries. Right. And also it will give a easy, safe delivery of the fetus. That's what they said. Right. In the objectives. Then we looked at the indications. Basically, indications are that you will give it in a inelastic or a rigid perineum if you're in anticipating a perineal tear like uh, in if it is a breech delivery or a big baby or a face to pubis delivery or a shoulder dystocia all this we have looked at details in the uh, previous video operative delivery means if you're exp you want to do forceps or a ventose delivery so before uh, uh, you know uh, when will you do the episiotomy in a forceps just after putting the blade okay that time they're telling you should do the forceps delivery okay then coming to previous uh, perineal surgery, this lady has had her pelvic floor repair and her reconstructive surgery. Would you want to put so much stress on that uh, kind of a repair? No. So in those cases, you will do episiotomy. The common indications are threatened perineal injury, rigid perineum, forceps breach, uh, occipital posterior, which is con uh, constant uh, occipital posterior kind of a thing or a face delivery. Okay. Timing of episiotomy, you saw it, in the, it is in the second stage of lab, labor, uh, just prior to the crowning because here you will have a thin uh, perineum, bulged uh, thin perineum and that is when during contraction, this is when they are saying you should do it. If you do it before this, there will be more bleeding and if you do it after it, what will happen? The whole point of doing episiotomy is waste because anyways, it would have stretched the perineum. Okay. And if you're doing forceps delivery, you should do, do the episiotomy before, uh, sorry, 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 after, after the application of the forceps, uh, those blades of the forceps, okay, after, after we'll put as green, what do you say, okay, uh, then, now we have come to episiotomy types, this is what we have to look at in this video, episiotomy types, what are the four types, guys, what we do is only medial lateral, median also not done so much, I'm thinking, lateral not at all done, because you can injure the Bartholin duct, J-shaped, what about this, how is J shape? This is also not done widely. So, which color shall we use for this? Okay. We have to read about these in detail. Look at this photo. It will help you understand the types of episiotomy. This one is median. Let's use a better color. Median and mediolateral, they actually do. This is median. This one is mediolateral. Mediolateral is done a lot, right? Mediolateral. And this one is J-shaped. So also they don't do much. And lateral. Lateral they don't do. So let us mark it like this. Something like this. Lateral. Okay, lateral. And uh, whenever they are saying you can do mediolateral on both sides, isn't it? So mediolateral, let's say mediolateral, you can do on any side, right? You don't have to do only on one side. Are you getting it guys? They have shown the diagram like this, but we can do it on the other side also, right? Mediolateral, J-shaped. Okay. But this is median. Will you do it this side? No. You will be enduring all these structures. Okay. Quickly tell the <coughs> advantages and disadvantages. See, in this one, what can happen? This incision can get extended till the anus, anal opening and you can injure the rectum, etc. So, kind of undisliked. What about lateral one which we spoke about? You can injure the Bartholin ducts, isn't it? Then, so this one also lateral they won't do. What about mediolateral? Mediolateral is the one they actually do, though it will leave uh, probably a little more scar than the median one, but uh, this one they like. Okay, let us look at uh, this one. See, what you have to remember are only two. Median versus mediolateral. You don't have to know about uh, the other things um, because those things are not done, isn't it? Now, 
let's get started with this uh, theory theory information mediolateral where do you make the incision guys medial mediolateral you will make the incision downward and outwards from the midpoint of the fauchet either to the right or the left we already told you so from this midpoint of the fauchet either to the right or the left downwards and outwards okay downwards and outwards either one way don't do both okay we'll go to the right okay it is directed diagonally in a straight line which runs about 2.5 cm away from anus so this is what is the best part about it it goes away from the anus right 2.5 cm away from the anus so which is a good thing for us okay so it is actually midpoint between the anus and the ischial tuberosity okay then coming to the median one median one is right here for us median is an incision that commences from the center of the fauchet and extends posteriorly along the midline see this is the same thing it starts where at the center of the fauchet and it goes posteriorly along the midline for about 2.5 cm but here the chances is you can go so long and you can injure the anus okay then lateral lateral they didn't even show here but anyways we will show it uh, in this diagram lateral wait what are we looking at people lateral one so lateral we'll take a red right okay lateral incision starts 1 cm away from the center of the fauchet so from one, from here from 1 cm away from it it will start okay and it will extend laterally something like this is it laterally so basically it has got many drawbacks it there will be injury to bartholin's ducts it is totally condemned okay we don't like it that's why we put it in red now what about j J is here, guys. You can see this J also they don't like so much. But anyways, we will show it uh, in brown or something. See, this is your J one. So where do you think it's starting? Again, the same thing begins at the center of the fauchet and directed posteriorly along the midline for one up for about one point five centimeter, and then directed downward and outward along the five o'clock or seven o'clock position. Five o'clock, seven o'clock, five o'clock or seven o'clock. That means right or left, right? So basically, you're trying to avoid the anal sphincter, guys. That's it. So what are you doing here? you begin at the center of the fauchet directed posteriorly we are going posteriorly see it's almost like this still here it, this is also going posterior you go posteriorly okay along the midline you'll go for about 1.0 cm then you're scared you'll hit the anus <laughs> that time suddenly you are taking a turn kind of a thing looks like okay and then directed downward and outward at 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock position to avoid the anus because so this is like halfway here and halfway there kind of a thing right so can you tell the four types of episiotomy say median medial mediolateral mediolateral j shaped j shaped lateral lateral okay thank you so the uh, problem with j shaped is guys uh, the problem with j shaped is see here the apposition is not perfect and the repaired wound would be uh, t tends to be puckered so the uh, the wound will not be nice to look at looks like all right you cannot join it properly and uh, the repaired wound tends to be puckered puckered okay so this is not done widely so what are they doing widely medial lateral median medial lateral mostly right okay let us look at the differences between medial lateral and median episiotomy one question for you guys what exactly are they doing here medial lateral very good now you can see the baby's head is crowning here but always don't expect a head if it's a breech delivery or something isn't it or even it could be a face to pubis Okay, median versus medial lateral. Which one do you want to uh, learn, guys? I mean, which one do you like? Medial lateral. Why? Because less chance of injuring the anus, right? So look at the merits of uh, medial lateral. Because this is what you have to learn. Medial lateral. It is safe from rectal involvement because of extension. You will not go into the anus and rectum. So rec there is. Uh, it is safe from. If you extend little more, also you will not hit something. Okay, so you can extend the incision. If you extend also, rectal involvement will be will not be there. So it is relatively safe. Okay, what are the problems with this medial lateral? Nothing big, right? It is more of a cosmetic kind of thing. They are saying the opposition of the tissues is not as good as the median one. That's it. But opposition is there, not as bad as those the J shaped and all. I'm thinking the blood loss is little more. Post-operative discomfort is more. Okay, this is something patients will feel like. Oh, post-operative discomfort is more. Okay. but i'm sure it is not such a big issue relative increased incidence of wound disruption is yeah, the same thing about the wound the opposition that's what they're talking about and dyspareunia is more what is dyspareunia the painful intercourse is comparatively more 
Okay, so we have uh, the more things I am concerned, uh, I would feel is the discomfort or the dyspareunia. Pain is never nice, right? Okay, but now let us come to the median one. Now median one, why they don't do? They don't do it. So let us look at the demerits. If it gets extended, it can involve the rectum, right? So nobody wants a, another structure to be damaged, right? So involvement of the rectum, nobody wants, right? So it is not suitable for manipulative delivery. Like if you want to use forceps or uh, uh, forceps or uh, vacuum, it doesn't seem to be suitable, is it? Okay, that's also a really bad thing according to me. Then what are the good things about it? Good things is muscles are not cut. Muscles are not cut at all. That seems nice. Okay, in the median one. Then blood loss is less. Okay, repair is easy. Post-operative comfort is there, okay, because muscles are not cut. Healing is superior. Wound disruption is rare. Dyspareunia is rare, okay. So, yeah, there are some advantages that muscles are not cut at all. And, uh, but really, do you want to take the risk of getting your rectum damaged? Not at all. So, guys, we have looked at the types of episiotomy and we have also looked at the comparison. Okay, this is the scissors, bush scissors, which they use. Look at um, how it is so nice, right? Episiotomy scissors. Okay, in the next video, we have to look at the steps of the mediolateral. See, what are they asking you to learn? Your textbook asks you to learn only mediolateral. So guys, what will you uh, look at in this? Uh, uh, preliminarily, you will swab that person, paint with povidone, iodine, etc. And then you will give local anesthesia. What local anesthesia you will give to these people? One percent lignocaine. Okay, infiltrated the 10 ml, 10 ml of 1% lignocaine. We look at all the steps in details. And then you will make the incision and what and all structures are cut. Look at the structures uh, is written here. Basically, the posterior vaginal wall, superficial and deep transverse perineal muscles, bulbospongiosis, part of levator ani, fascia covering those muscles, transverse perineal branches of some vessels and nerves. Some uh, vessels and nerves are cut, but some branches only. Uh, subcutaneous tissue and skin. Okay. So basically, these are the structures that are cut in the incision. We'll come to all that. Then uh, we have to look at the steps of repair. How to repair also you should learn. So it is uh, not going to be so easy, guys. You have to learn all these three steps. Then once you're done with all this, post-operatively, how you will ask the patient to care for it, etc. Then what are the complications of episiotomy? You have to look at. Okay, we'll continue in the next video, okay, with the steps. So we'll continue with these steps in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.